Hi, this is Jim Gibson. Today's video is going to be it's a second part of the video that I made last week called the Cable ID Systems and where I talked about the cable identifier and a different way to install cables. Now I'm not talking about different cables, I'm not talking about different face plates or jacks or patch panels. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying the actual physical installation of the the cables and the jacks, uh, you should do them differently than what you've been taught in college <laughs> uh, or other places. I teach it the old way. I kind of assumed that there was some people going to give me pushback on it, which is fine, by the way. If you disagree with me, leave the messages. I appreciate that. You may have legitimate concerns and thoughts. I hope in this video that I can uh, allay some of your fears and concerns and help you understand what I'm talking about and how this system is far superior um, than the old way of doing it. So I'm going to be talking about labeling, the traditional way of labeling and the way I say the traditional way doesn't work, okay? Um, and I'm going to show you how my way and how it works and how it's a lot simpler, a lot easier and also a, a very professional looking. This is about the most organized way you can put cables in and it's going to be patch panel centric. See, most people, they label the jacks one, two, three, four, five, and they go around the room and that's the old way of doing it. And it's not patch panel centric because what happens is the customer shows up and says, I'm going to need three more jacks between jack two and jack three. And now your system is all thrown off. My system, it's not thrown off. It's not a problem. I'll be able to document it and you'll be able to find each of those jacks in my documentation clearly and easily. Uh, so a little bit of background on the cable identifier. Yes, it is a product I sell. Yes, it is patented. <laughs> and yes, I, I sell them. I don't, don't sell tons of them, but I sell them mostly to cable contractors. Uh, so if you're just doing your house or anything else, you don't need this product. Uh, but this product uh, saves tons of time. Now, where I figured it out is when I was doing a large install in LA, uh, I had all my people there. We were doing cable after cable. We were pulling a lot of cables. By the time we were done, we went to the data room. And you know how it, sometimes it comes down from the ceiling and my cables were about that thick. And I thought, now how in the world can I do the jack one, jack two, jack three. So I came up with another way of doing it. I thought it through and then I invented the cable identifier. Now with the cable identifier, I don't do one, two, three, four, five. I don't even worry about that, <laughs> okay? That will be taken, taken care of later at the end. What I do, and you get to stick with me to the end because I'm gonna show you how I solved this problem that a lot of people complain about on the last video. Oh, that's all mixed up and it's all confusing and it's not very professional. No, it's not confusing and it is professional and it is neat and, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. But anyway, the way I do it is, I just pull the cables, man, to every location that the customer asks me to do it. I pull all those cables and uh, I don't label them. I don't sit there and spend the time with the Sharpie. Now, if you listen to brother, brother printers, they have this way that you can upload it into the cloud and you download it into the cloud and you download it into your flute tester and then you do this and you do that. Gosh, by the time I do all that, <laughs> I'm gonna be really late for tomorrow's breakfast, okay? I don't wanna do that. I want it simple but professional. So I do use a printer, but I use it in a different way. And I do brother printers, by the way, so I'm not blasting them. They're just trying to sell a product a little differently these days. But anyway, I cable everything. And then I take the cables and I terminate them. Now when I'm terminating them, you know how you see these pictures where they're coming down the wall and they're really nice and they bend nice and they come into the back of the patch panel and they look really fantastic. They got the Velcro tie wraps around them every foot or so. And man, they just look professional. They're great. Now I can punch down everything on that patch panel and, and all the jacks are punched down. But I haven't labeled anything. I haven't pulled out my Sharpie. I haven't used the advanced, the greatest uh, brother that, that gives me serial numbers on each cable. I haven't done all that stuff because it's not necessary. It's a waste of time. So what I do now is I use the cable identifier. And I give that cable identifier to my technician out on the floor 
We have radios. I populate my patch panels with LEDs and this cable identifier, when you plug it in, it lights up the LED and I can identify it right there. And then I tell the technician, I will say something like patch panel D port three. And he'll put in there D dash three. And he'll label it right next to the keystone outlet on the faceplate. So as soon as I pull that LED out of that patch panel, I'm going to push my tester. So I'm actually going to say pull power, push tester, and he's going to put in the remote part of the tester. He's going to plug it in. He's going to get lights. I'm going to get lights. Both of us are going to be happy. Then I'm going to turn around and say, absolutely, time to go. Go on to the next one. And he goes to the next one, and he goes to the next one. And as he's going, I'm pulling out the LEDs that are already lit, and I'm putting them in my box that I have. So I know my progress. But on this install that was up in LA where we had hundreds and hundreds of jacks throughout the building, just cable the building and then tell your cablers to walk away. And now it's time to identify them and you use the cable identifier. No, it does not test the cable. That's not the purpose of the cable identifier. It's just to identify that cable that's punched down on the wall with a faceplate. Now what I do, once the system is completely done, Okay, then I'm going to label those face plates above the jacket. And what it's going to say high on there, it's going to say station one. So I'm going to go station one, station two, station three, station four, station five. Now, how is that any different? Well, let's put it this way. On station two, there's two cables going to it. And so I labeled them A, three, B, one, uh, station two. So it's really easy to identify. Um, now, when I do that, I put it in a spreadsheet where you can see where it goes. And I take the floor plan and I just stick it behind a three by four poster frame. Uh, but before I do that, I'm writing down each jack number very nice and neat on that. But so I have two documentations. I have one that's a Excel spreadsheet that documented what I did. And then I also have it up on the wall. Very easy to follow. Now, one of the nice things about that is someone comes to you and they say, oh, I kind of messed up. We need to add five more jacks between your station six and your station seven. And uh, I would say, well, which one do you want it uh, to come out at station six or station seven? And if they say, well, want it to come out at station six, should be in that area where six is. I say, hey, no problem, man. What I do then is I add some of these ports. Like here's a, a one that has four ports in it, uh, but there's other of these face plates. You know, you can get them with up to six ports in some of these face plates, and um, and it's still station six. And then you just add you know, the, the patch panel. Now, again, the patch panels are, are alpha. So the first patch panel is going to be A, second patch panel is going to be B, third C. I know you know the alphabet, so it keeps on going on like that. So I, I do A, and then if it's port 10, it's going to be A10 on the faceplate. But it's not going to be jack 10. It's just, it's, it's just saying where it's at on the patch panel. Uh, and that's going to be it. And it, at the top, it's going to give the station number. So you can write the station number on the floor plan, and then you can have your your data sheet your, that can be modified. By the way, if you got an Excel spreadsheet, you can you can search some of these terms. You can you know if you're looking for um, a certain uh, jack in a certain room, it gets really easy to find. You can just email the customer uh, that data and it's, it's fantastic. And if you use a nice printer, you're going to print and you're going to put all that right on the jack, very clearly uh, marked. Okay. And so some of the criticisms that I saw in the last video, Hey, by the way, man, please criticize. Okay. Because that's how I learn uh, is by hearing other people's ideas. But I'm telling you, the thing I'm teaching you right now is going to save you about 30% labor. I listen to some of the criticism. Some people say it's unprofessional. No, it's just a new way of doing it. It's a different way. 
but no one else is doing it this way. I, I came up with it this way. This is how I do my installs. Very neat, very documented, easily searchable, easy to find even if you don't have the documentation. You can just go right to the, to the station. You can see the, the first jack and you can see it's D3. And the second jack is A1. We can do things like that. I was working for this nonprofit <laughs> and hoping that I could help them and save them some money. And I told them to do it this way and they said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, we're going to mark the end of the cable. This, this other person in IT has told us to do that, the rate at the end of the cable. Uh, he had multiple rooms, he had hallways, and he was trying to do one, two, three, four, five, and then out in the hallway, it'd be six, seven, and go into the next room, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then 13, 14, and he tried to do that, okay? Then the painters came. So the painter oversprayed, but they just sprayed. <laughs> and he called me up and he said, now, I'm, I'm stuck, how do I identify these? And I told him how to identify them. And I said, just jack them out, use a cable identifier. And of course he said, well, what we'll do is we'll tone them all out. <laughs> You're gonna to be toning them forever if you have a big installation. He had a big installation, probably 150 uh, jacks. I don't know whatever happened. I wish him the best. I saw what he did and I patted him on the back. Good job, he solved it. But the bottom line is, in my opinion, as a, a commercial cable contractor who's been doing this since the 80s, that my method of doing it is gonna save you a ton of time and it's gonna be very professional. So I'm not gonna read all this stuff that people, uh, uh, they're good questions by the way. Uh, one person said it only takes three seconds to identify the cables and I'm thinking, I don't know any cable, it takes three seconds, but then you're gonna spend the next 20 minutes looking for that stupid cable in that bundle of 200 cables. So anyway, you can take my, uh, my thoughts and act on them or you can do whatever you want, but please, even if you disagree with me, tell me, because you might have a better way of doing it and I'm, I'm gonna be open to your better way of doing it. I'm more than happy to listen to it because um, I hope to learn something new on a regular basis and uh, I can uh, learn not only from my mistakes but I can learn from other people's mistakes also. So maybe there, I have a blind spot here that you may be able to point out. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you have a great time and I'll see you on the next video.